Hi, I'm Craig. Hello, I'm John. Hi, I'm Sean. Hi, I'm Sarah Rock. Hi, I'm Trevor. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Hi, my name's David Miller. BIM is the process of building design, delivery and operation shifting to digital. So as manufacturers, we need to be able to deliver useful digital information to help add value to that process. That's intelligent 3D objects and the data linked to them. For clients, BIM is all about unlocking value from assets. It's about focus on the form, the function, and what it's trying to achieve for the business. For solicitors, BIM doesn't have a huge effect at level two. You've got your standard form contracts, which everybody uses across the industry. JCT and NEC suites have come up with a bit of guidance as to how to incorporate BIM. There's only really one contract that has BIM clauses, which is the CIOB complex projects contract, but that's meant for complex projects which are huge, so if you're doing a smaller project, you'd still use JCT. You only really need to do a little bit of drafting to incorporate the BIM protocol. The protocol is, I think, the main legal document because that flows down from the BIM execution plan and the employee's information requirements and puts those in a place where they can be a contractual document that then you need a bit of drafting to tie that in so it doesn't just float around, but there isn't really that much to worry about legally. For contractors, BIM is going to mean a more streamlined information process. At the moment it's really fragmented, um, it takes a time to get response, gather all the information together. This is more instant, everyone works together collaboratively and you get a result much quicker. For cost managers, BIM is transformational. Instead of quantity spheres of cost managers having to manually extract quantities or measure quantities from drawings or schematics or single line diagrams. They can automatically extract quantities from building information models. BIM for consultants is quite varied. It can involve either supporting projects in a more digitally integrated way or even supporting companies in the way that they train and upskill their staff. For architects and designers, BIM will mean working almost entirely in a three-dimensional way. This is a fantastic opportunity as quite often designs are influenced by the way that uh, designers communicate their ideas. But the real win, the real step change, is the structured information that will be associated with the model. And that will move us towards the dream of more perfect information. BIM has already improved the speed, quality and quantity of our output. BIM is absolutely essential to ensure that you're getting the maximum value out of scarce funds. For a public sector client, it's even more important because the funds that we used to rely upon just don't exist. So a benefit for a construction solicitor from BIM probably comes at the other end of the project when it's gone wrong. Um, so if there's a dispute, you've got a fantastic audit trail there of who changed what or who incorporated what at what point in time. On design and build projects, we control the information from the beginning, so we have complete control of everything to do with the project and we have ownership of that. And we can use just a viewing, basic viewing tools available across the, across the web to do that, so it's not a, a huge cost to the company for, for the uh, native software. It's what we call 5D BIM, where we've taken the three-dimensional model, we've appended cost information to it, um, and produced and rapidly produced uh, estimates. And the, the, the big change for Quantity Spheres is we're now free to do higher value-added work, as in validating the information in the model, verifying that scope has actually been trapped in the model itself and supplementing the quantities extracted from the model with items which may not necessarily have been modelled. We simply have to embrace BIM. Manual methods of measuring and counting are just too slow. Currently we tend to cost completed designs. We don't help designers design to cost. And that will be the opportunity and the challenge for cost managers uh, to allow us really help the design team design to cost, as opposed to having to come back and do reactive value engineering. As we move into a more digitally efficient industry, it's becoming more and more relevant to integrate BIM into your daily um, processes within your organisation. This is really important because as we move into the future, obviously we're lacking skills, um, we need to upskill, etc. And having a consultant to support that and to actually ensure that you, you do have that capability is of paramount importance moving into not only the capability of your organisation, but the capability of the industry as a whole. And the, the shared model has become the thing that pulls a whole team together. It's become the focus of design team meetings 
and, and it meant that, has meant that there's a real shared experience amongst the team and has produced a, a much more positive atmosphere around a project. And we found that to be possibly the biggest change in the way that we've been working. So when we were a smaller practice of four people, the investment was, was a fairly serious part of our, uh, of our annual turnover. But that investment really allowed the practice to grow. Now that we're a team of 24 people, that ongoing investment is fairly nominal. Start with a trial project and then use the easily available YouTube videos, webinars. The BIM community is very good with sharing their knowledge and passing it around to everyone. Don't be afraid of the size of the project. Get your feet wet and start to build the knowledge that way. I would recommend an incubator approach where perhaps you identify a, a BIM champion and a particular project and uh, uh, use the tools and the processes in that, in that project. But the aim should be to blow that role apart as soon as possible and uh, uh, take it through to all of your projects and all of your team in order that it becomes business as usual. In regard to starting off on your journey, trial projects are really successful as well as also acknowledging where your capabilities lie and, and assessing your staff. Take an element of a project, maybe it's structural steel, maybe it's ductwork or pipework, and put that through a BIM quantity extraction process. And I would recommend in parallel, do a 2D exercise on that, measure it traditionally, compare the two. BIM is all about building confidence, building confidence and trust in your capabilities and in the quant your quantities and in the models themselves. Twitter's been an invaluable resource. Uh, the BIM community really helps each other out and <laughs> people wouldn't believe it, but the solicitors help each other out as well. I'd also go online and look at the PAS suite, PAS 1192. You're going to have to incorporate those in some way, whether it's under a clause that incorporates a reasonable standard of skill and care of whatever you are, whoever, whoever you're acting for as a solicitor. Um, they ought to be incorporated and read, more importantly. Clients need to get into BIM at an obvious stage in the life cycle, and for us, that stage is when you're acquiring new assets. During the development of assets, there's a data-rich environment and that provides you the feedstock for the future that can liberate the value necessary for the ongoing upkeep of those assets. Think of BIM as better information management. So your first task could be getting all your product's information out of printed brochures and PDFs into a more usable and searchable formats. So the best place to start is look at your product information and how that's currently formatted. So where is that information stored? How is it accessed? How can you make that process easier? And most importantly, how can you make sure that that information is in digital format? <laughs>